Hi, my name's Adam. Welcome to the channel. Thank you for joining us today. Today we're going to talk about a very important topic that affects every single one of you, no matter what your age is, and that is around CPP and OAS. So there's a few parts of this video I want to cover. Uh, firstly, I'm going to address the Globe and Mail article that Fred Vitesse had out. Now, Fred Vitesse has a wonderful book. If you have not read his book or don't have his book, I highly recommend it uh, as a purchase. Uh, I'll put a link below there. Uh, again, Retirement Income for Life. Uh, someone introduced me to this book about a year, year and a half ago, and it literally, I don't have it with me because it sits on my bedside table. Like that, that's kind of my bedside table book. I've probably read it through four or five times. The majority of what's in that book is what we talk about on this channel, deferring CPP and kind of tax strategy to maximize income, minimize tax, and just have a proper plan in place. Now, Fred's article in Globe and Mail talked about a bit of an anomaly this year with regards to when you should collect CPP. And Fred's a big proponent to, look, defer CPP all the way till 70. But there's always these things that come up and 2022 is no different. So 2022, um, what happens is if you're getting close to 70 and we're deferring CPP, it might make the most sense to take your CPP before the end of this year. So start it in by the end of this year, uh, ideally, you know, November, December. What that does is it's actually gonna give you more money both now and down the road. And I'll explain how that works here in a second. Let me first take a step back and start with how is CPP, like the growth of CPP and OAS calculated? And you know, in simple terms and where you read everywhere, including the Government of Canada website, is if you defer or delay CPP past age 65, it's 0.7% increase every single month. OAS is a little bit less, it's 0.6% increase. Now, the increase on Canadian pension plan, the CPP, is based on, before you take it, is based on YMPE or wage growth. Once you take CPP, then future growth is based on CPI or inflation. So what we've run into this year is YMPE or wage growth is actually lower than inflation. Typically wage growth is a bit higher than inflation. This year it's a bit lower. Now, another addition into here, and again, this is through a conversation I had with Doug Runchy today, and we were just talking about the article and the calculation, how this all works and how it affects each and every one of you watching this video. And Doug said the big factor here, one of the big factors here anyway, is that CPI, when it talks about like your bumper increase in the amount of CPP that you collect, is the one year average. So whatever CPI is for the year is what you're gonna get bumped. Whereas wage growth, they look at a five year average. You know, you can have one big year of inflation like we've had and it kind of skews this, do I defer my CPP or do I start taking it now? We don't have CPI numbers for October quite yet and we also don't have the YMPE which comes out in November, probably publicly fully released in December which is a little bit too late to get going for CPP to collect in 2022. So we're kind of guesstimating numbers, but again, I'm gonna put up on a screen, this is an automated reply that, that Doug had sent out to me, uh, and then I had a conversation with him after, but you can see, so point one, the precise figures for the CPI increase from 2022 to 2023 cannot be determined until October, uh, CPI amounts are released, which will be in late November. Number two, the 2023 YMP figure has not been officially released, but it should likely be 66,500. This would make the five-year average YMP ending in 2023 61,820. Again, a five-year average, which would mean the increase of approximately 3.55 over 2022. Combining points one and two above, if you start your CPP in December 22 versus January 2023, you will receive that one extra payment plus your monthly CPP payment will be approximately 2.5% higher for life. Now, how does that work? So again, I had a conversation with Doug today and basically at a very high level without going into the detail. And again, if you fall into this category and I say, if you're 68 or 69 and you know you turn 70 or 69 in 2023 and you think, well, maybe it just makes sense to take it now, reach out to Doug, he can do a calculation for you and help you walk through that process. Again, the calculation for CPP is very complicated. There's a lot to it. And it's not public information. Like you have to hire someone like Doug who specializes in this to make it happen. So reach out to Doug, we'll put his contact information below. But what happens is if you start your CPP in December, let's say of 2022, at the end of the year or start of the year, so January, 2023, you get an increase based on CPI, which again is six and a half percent. You're gonna get a big bump in your payment. Whereas if you wait till January, 2023 to start collecting your CPP, then the bump into 2023 is based off YMP, which is wage growth, which is lower. 
So what happens this year is you're going to get a bigger bump heading into 2023 off inflation versus wage growth. And again, if you're already taking it, you're going to get the inflation bump. If you're not taking it and you're waiting deferring it, you're going to get the wage bump, which is a bit lower. So again, you want the inflation bump, not the wage bump. And I think Doug said it well in that, you know, this is an opportunity, not misplanning, right? The planning day after day, and, and Fred even says this too, the planning makes sense to defer your CPP to 70 all the time, but there's these odd anomalies or opportunities, if you want to call them that, where, hey, it actually does make sense to take it a bit earlier. And again, the thing you're going to want to watch for, because my question would be, okay, well, for all of you watching this, that are say 65. Should you start CPP? Well, you'd have to have the crystal ball to figure out like, is inflation gonna stay higher than wage growth for years going forward? And if you think yes, then maybe you take CPP. If not, then not. Um, typically, wage growth has been about 1% higher than inflation for many years. This is, again, an anomaly this year. Going forward, deferring until 70 is going to make the most sense most of the time. And so that's what you have to plan around. So. Is this an opportunity for those that are maybe 69 years old this year? Sure it is. It's, it, maybe you jump the gun a little bit by a few months um, and get that CPP going. But for the rest of us that are waiting, uh, waiting does make the most sense most of the time. And so that's what you should be doing. Another comment that Doug had mentioned on our, our call was that, again, this is a bit of a blip. And has it happened before? It has. Um, you know, Doug didn't have the numbers on that, obviously, but it has happened before. It'll probably happen again. Uh, it's something to keep an eye out. And again, you know, lean on channels like us, you know, uh, articles like Fred puts out to kind of say, okay, th this might be one of those years again. Do I need to run the calculation to figure out if I fall into this basket or not? I know for most of you, if you're younger, if you're, if you're not in that 68, 69 range, I think you can pass this one by. Keep deferring that CPP. It still does make the most sense. Uh, I think YMP will come higher than inflation going forward. I think we could have some low, much lower inflation going forward. Again, if you look back to kind of the, the early to mid 80s into early 90s, inflation was quite high and then it dipped right back down. Are we gonna see something like that again? It's year over year growth. We have really high numbers now. If they come down, that's gonna help you know your CPP number for deferring it. So I think we're gonna get back to normal. Uh, Doug kind of mentioned the same thing. Of course, no one has the crystal ball, but again, if you're 68, 69, this is something that you should be looking at. Uh, reach out to Doug, have that calculation done. We'll put his link below. And again, if you haven't read Fred's article, we'll link that below as well. It brought up more questions than answers, and that's why I wanted to bring out this uh, this video today. I did ask Fred to come on the channel. He said he's going to hold off on that, but we'll get him on eventually, I'm sure. Um, and we'll get him to talk about this concept a little bit more, what to look out for in that CPP and all that. And again, if you haven't checked out his book, we put that link below as well. Very good read, highly recommend it. If you're kind of 45 plus thinking of starting to gear into retirement, cash flow and all that. Uh, it's a great read and it's a great complimenter along with what we put out on this channel. So hopefully this helped you out. If you ran across that article, had some questions, hopefully this brings a bit more clarity. I know there's a lot of information packed into this video. Watch it at half speed, watch it again, um, and hopefully kind of grind that out. So thank you for joining us in this video and we'll see you in the next one.